<sighs> I decided to make videos and all the other Tony Hawk games, so here we are back on the skateboard. It's Ocean back again, bringing you more Tony Hawk goodness, and yes, I've decided I'm going to be covering every game, or at least every game that I have access to. Not all at once, but I will be releasing these videos all the time. So today I'm back on this board of nightmares to talk about Tony Hawk's pro skateboarding. So I'm going to get off this board now so I can actually do the video. <laughs> So I wanted to tell you the story of how this video game came to be, so come and join me on the sofa. Once upon a time, there lived a happy little unicorn. He lived in the happy kingdom of Asgard, where he lived with his best friend, Elmore. But one day, Elmore was murdered. He was stabbed repeatedly, and the unicorn was forced to watch on in horror as Elmore was disemboweled and eaten by the peons of Count E. Count E then tortured Elmore's family members until they couldn't take it anymore. And Elmore's mother scratched her own face off. The Unicorn decided in memory of Elmore that they would create a skateboarding game. And that's how this all became a reality. But they needed a mascot. Somebody that could get them sales for this game. But who? Until one day they saw a man complete a 900 spin. And at that moment, he knew. He just knew. Yeah, I guess he'll be fine. And thus the dynasty, known as Tony Hawk's Pro Skating, was born. Finn. I think I should talk to a therapist. <sighs> okay, so usually, I'd have a story section here. But the problem with this game, is there is no story. Because it's not that kind of game. It's an arcadey kind of game. There's no story! There's literally none of it! None at all! Which I absolutely can't stand, because it messes with my goddamn video format, and I shall not stand for it! You know, out of spite, I would present this video in this style the, the entire time. Can't quite see it, so I'll try and zoom this down a little bit. But as you can see, I'm, I'm sat down. I'm not standing for this! Nuh uh! You can't make me! Final stand up, but only because I'm gonna be out of frame the entire time for dawn. So, skipping right ahead to the gameplay section, Tony Hawk's Pro Skateboarding takes an incredibly arcadey feel to skateboarding, but you can do flips and grab tricks just like you can in real skateboarding. You can also hold those grabs, which is incredibly handy for scoring more points. You can do grind tricks by approaching a rail and pressing the top button on your controller. The left analog stick or the D pad controls your skater as expected, with right stick doing absolutely nothing as controllers back in that game's day didn't have a second stick. You can also do a spin by using the triggers or just simply holding left or right. Oh god, Jesus. A lot of the stuff that you can do in this game doesn't feel realistic at all, but it sure is fun and that is the point. This game does a really good job at keeping things simple and sometimes a simple game can be a better option. After all, we got these games later on that tried to be way too complex and holy crap these games can be kinda hard! Combos aren't as much of a thing in the original title. The most you can do is jump, trick and then grind which makes point scoring a lot harder in this game. The main progression mode in this game is career mode, and it has you completing different kinds of challenges on a variation of different maps, all under a time limit. Each level has five challenges, but three levels have their own scoring competition instead. The common goals that you can find on most of these levels tend to be things like collecting skate letters, completing a map-oriented goal such as destroying boxes, and reaching certain point thresholds. When you beat a challenge, you get a, a tape for it. For some reason. And once you complete enough challenges and collect enough tapes, you can unlock new levels. Then you pretty much just repeat this process until you get to the score competitions. On these levels, you must rack up a ton of points to beat other skaters, with all the other skaters being NPCs that have random scores. Then that's it, pretty much. There isn't really much more to the game. You can play a two-player mod, a timed single session, or you can play some free skates, but they're pretty much all the same thing. It is a very simple game, but its simplicity is where it really stands out. And that's a good thing. Moving over to the next section, now recently I have been trying to incorporate a graphics section into my videos, and I do think this game's graphical style works really well for its arcadey feel, but the problem that I find myself having is I don't really like to rate 
games like this that have very outdated graphics. Just because I feel like it's not fair of me to judge the game by its time. But apart from some of its sluggish performance, I do think that graphically, it's fine. It's not supposed to look realistic, it's not supposed to look super amazing. It has an arcadey kind of aesthetic to it, and that works very well. Soundtrack. Something that adds a lot of charm to this game is its soundtrack. It contains only a handful of tracks overall, but those tracks are awesome. From bands such as the Dead Kennedys, Suicidal Tendencies, and Primus, the band that made the South Park theme tune. It is all mostly just rock music, but my favourite track, without a doubt, is Superman by Goldfinger! So here I am, doing all the tricks I can. Holding on to what I am, pretending I'm a Superman. This soundtrack has achieved an iconic status within the game's community because it just adds so much more fun to the game. The game literally could have just been no soundtrack whatsoever, or it could have added in songs that don't really feel like they fit. The soundtrack really fits skater culture of that era, and that is awesome. What the fuck? Imagine if I just presented the video the entire time like this. Holy crap, this is kind of scary. But now it's time to roll on over to the issues section. <sighs> THPSWTFBBQ has some problems. The movement can either feel too stiff or too loose and fast. <laughs> That's also what she said. This means that trying to do really accurate jumps is an absolute pain in the ass. You can tweak your trucks in order to change the handling on turning in the main menus, but I didn't feel like this really helped much. I also noticed that sometimes it's hard to tell when you're actually gonna grind a rail, or whether you will just fall off of it, which can cause a bail. Holy crap, I only just realized. Poetry corner with ocean. <laughs> One of my biggest problems with this game though is the camera system in this game is so obnoxious. It actually feels like it just moves around at random because you don't have a second stick to control it, which sometimes means that you cannot see what you are skating towards. Otherwise, the game's fine, I suppose. Right. Pretty well. Ah, so close. That counts. That counts. Oh, good God. Parkour. Okay, so to finish up, I'm completely aware there's a lot of nostalgia for this game. Even I have nostalgia for this game. And because I love some of the sequels that came later on so much, this game wasn't that fun for me. My nostalgia for this series did kind of affect my enjoyment of the game. And I know that probably isn't fair, but I can't lie. I didn't enjoy playing this. Well, apart from the soundtrack. The game's clunky movement and obnoxious camera really spoiled this game for me, and it stopped me from truly getting into the game, and that makes me feel sad. I know I only said the movement feels frustrating, but when the game is simple in its design, a crucial part of that design can tarnish the game overall, and movement is the biggest cog in this game's mechanical wheel. I can't help the way that I feel about this game. I love this series, but I always struggle to go back to the earliest games because of how well they perfected future iterations. Now, I'm not going to give it a bad rating, I feel like that would be unfair to the game, because it can be fun, but I can't find it in my heart to give it a fun times rating. Therefore, Tony Hawk's Pro Skateboarding has earned the title of meh. Thank you for watching! If you have played Tony Hawk's Pro Skateboarding, what did you think of it? Let me know in the comments section down below. I just want to quickly reiterate that this is just my opinion, I'm not saying that yes, the video game overall is terrible and you shouldn't like it. Everyone has different opinions, if you like that video game, that's awesome, but if you don't like that video game, that's fine too. Now as I previously mentioned, I will be making videos on the Tony Hawk games that I haven't covered so far sometime in the future. So if you are interested in that, or if you liked this video, feel free to subscribe, click the like and all that good stuff, click the bell that does the ding, but considering this is a Tony Hawk video, I feel like it wouldn't be right to say goodbye without doing a trick on the skateboard. So let's do it! I see you up there.
Son of a bitch. This means that trying to do accurate jumps is an absolute pain in the- Where am I going? Stop. Stop Stop turning. <laughs> there. This is harder than the skateboarding. What the hell? There's your new video game, Activision. Tony Hawk's Pro Cherboarding. Oh.